Hello all, this is Madan. I am thrilled to share my insights and my experience on goal-directed perfusion. Today, I will be guiding you all through a visual presentation that will provide you with an in-depth understanding of goal-directed perfusion. I hope by the end of this video, you will feel informed, inspired and ready to implement goal-directed perfusion in cardiopulmonary bypass. Let's get started. The amount of oxygen required by different organs in the body varies depending on their size and metabolic rates. The percentage of blood flow requirement for different organs in the human body can also vary. As a responsible perfusionist, the main goal is to make sure to provide the adequate blood flow to each organ to meet their physiological demands. Now let's see a small animation of how microcirculation occurs in our body. This is the normal flow, blood flow and the normal perfusion. During vasoconstricted phase, you can see the circulation is getting compromised leading to tissue hypoxia and ischemia which will eventually lead to anaerobic metabolism and organ damage. During vasodilated phase, you can see microcirculation is way much improved and good tissue perfusion is achieved. We all determine the adequacy of uh, perfusion traditionally using mean arterial blood pressure, the values of arterial blood gases and venous blood gases and the urine output. The parameters are shown over there. But how many of us have faced these situations? I have maintained calculated flows but the lactate values are very high. I have maintained the adequate blood pressure during CPB, but uh, ABG is so acidotic. I maintain good main arterial pressure and perfused well, but there is no urine output. I maintain full flows with optimal PO2, but SVO2 is low. I maintain full or super flows, but mean arterial pressure is very low. I maintained adequate mean arterial pressure, but post op patient has rhabdomyolysis. I maintain full flows and mean arterial pressure but the temperature is not coming up. How to perform CPB without compromising oxygenation for Jehovah's Witness babies without adding any blood? Most importantly, how can I prove that I perfused well? Is there a clinical indicator for that? The answer is yes. Let's see what is goal directed perfusion now. Goal directed perfusion is a type of blood flow management used during cardiopulmonary bypass. The goal is to maintain adequate blood flow to vital organs and tissues to provide enough oxygen. With the use of various monitoring parameters such as blood pressure, mixed venous oxygen saturation and cardiac index, this approach is intended to improve patient outcomes by reducing the risk of organ damage and also to maintain aerobic metabolism. The problems based on blood flow rate derived through body surface area. The perfusion blood flow rate in adult and pediatric cases is routinely calculated based on the body surface area. However, pump flow based solely on a cardiac index does not necessarily ensure the satisfactory delivery of oxygen to the patient tissues. Even with acceptable indexed flows, if the oxygen content of the arterial blood is low, the patient will be exposed to a perfusion oxygen delivery mismatch with physiological consequences similar to hyperperfusion. This may lead to metabolic acidosis, hyperlactemia and end organ ischemia, resulting in higher rates of morbidity and mortality. To truly know whether blood flow on bypass is adequate, it should be coupled with the arterial oxygen content, otherwise called as CaO2. This focuses on global oxygen delivery, which is nothing but the DO2. 
Shockingly, when we review the literatures, several literatures pointed out that the traditional perfusion techniques only achieve a high DO2 in 50 percentage of cases. Perfusing with goal directed perfusion approach does so in upward of 90 percentage of cases. Currently, practicing goal directed perfusion requires either the adoption of expensive DO2 monitoring systems or that the perfusion is performed complex and potentially distracting calculations while he is on bypass. Why we need goal directed perfusion? Because goal directed perfusion allows perfusionists to improve patient management scientifically with evidence based treatment in a more proactive manner rather than identifying outlying parameters when reviving the perfusion record following the procedures. Goal directed perfusion can target individual patient requirements by making focused micro level adjustments based on the needs of a specific patient. Individualized patient care is critical in reducing mortality. It takes into account real time values of the patient and notifies us when critical values are trending outside their accepted range. The goal directed perfusion can prevent acute kidney injury, hyperperfusion at tissue levels which can cause hyperlactemia, tissue hypoxia leading to anaerobic cellular metabolism, oxygen supply demand imbalance leading to vital organs injury, risk of morbidity and mortality, longer length of ICU stay and overall hospital length of stay. Do not get offended by <laughs> seeing this uh, evolution uh, animation. This is just a representation of how perfusionists evolved over decades in India being called pump technicians to today being called as clinical perfusionists. But is it enough? No. If we have to upgrade ourselves further to be called as perfusion scientists as we are designated in western countries, we need to adapt and practice an evidence based treatment. For that, the answer is goal directed perfusion and this is going to be the future. The main reason for not to follow GDP by perfusionist widely in the world is because of its complexity as you can see there are several mathematical computations available to do so. That is a popular myth which I want to break now. We will see how we are going to calculate in a simple manner manually also. For performing goal directed perfusion, we need to calculate oxygen delivery or otherwise called as DO2I, oxygen consumption otherwise called as VO2I and oxygen extraction ratio otherwise known as O2ER as well as DO2VO2 ratio. First, we have to calculate the CaO2 and CVO2. CaO2 is the amount of oxygen bound to hemoglobin plus the amount of oxygen dissolved in arterial blood. CVO2 is nothing but the mixed venous plus blood oxygen content. It is the amount of oxygen bound to hemoglobin plus the amount of oxygen dissolved in mixed venous blood. This is the formula which we use to calculate CaO2 and CVO2 and the inputs needed for calculations are arterial oxygen saturation, venous oxygen saturation, partial pressure of oxygen in arterial blood, partial pressure of oxygen in venous blood. Next we will see how to calculate DO2I. DO2I is nothing but the oxygen delivery index which is the volume of oxygen delivered per minute to the tissues taking body surface area into consideration. It reflects the supply of perfusion. The inputs needed for calculating DO2I are arterial oxygen content otherwise known as CaO2 and body surface area. We will see how to calculate the oxygen consumption index otherwise known as 
V over 2 I. It is nothing but the volume of oxygen consumed by the tissues per minute taking body surface area into consideration. It reflects the demand of perfusion required. The inputs needed for calculating V over 2 I are arterial oxygen content, mixed venous oxygen content and body surface area. Now let's see how to calculate and what is oxygen extraction ratio. The oxygen extraction ratio is the ratio of oxygen consumed by the body to the oxygen delivered to the body. If oxygen delivery decreases, the oxygen extraction ratio increases as tissues extract more of the delivered oxygen. Oxygen extraction ratio is a nice way to describe the adequacy of systemic oxygen delivery. The fractional uptake of oxygen into tissues is determined with the oxygen extraction ratio, which is the ratio of oxygen consumption to oxygen delivery. You can see the formula here. These oxygen extraction ratio interpretations are based on the assumption that the metabolic rate is normal or unchanging. You can see if the oxygen extraction ratio is below 20 percentage, it shows us there is a defect in oxygen utilization in the tissues level, which is usually because of the result of inflammatory cell injury in severe sepsis or septic shock. If oxygen extraction ratio is in the range of 20 percentage to 30 percentage, it is considered normal. If it is more than 30 percentage, there is a decrease in oxygen delivery that might be because of lesser hemoglobin level or a low blood flow rate. If the oxygen extraction ratio is greater than 50 percentage, that clearly shows us there is an inadequate tissue oxygenation happening during cardiopulmonary bypass. DVO2 to VO2 to ratio is nothing but the ratio of oxygen demand to oxygen delivery. This is the formula for calculating that. Even though SVRI is not calculated during bypass widely, I feel it is a must for us to do calculate to avoid using vasoconstrictors which can deplete the microcirculation as we can see in this small video. Systemic vascular resistance is the amount of force exerted on circulating blood by the vasculature of the body. To calculate SVRI during bypass, we need an input of mean arterial blood pressure, central venous pressure and the cardiac index you have maintained during bypass. We have seen how to calculate CaO2, CVO2, DO2I, VO2I, oxygen extraction ratio, DO2I, VO2I ratio and SVRI. The normal value range is shown in this uh, table for us to consider during cardiopulmonary bypass. It is a must for us to keep the level in this range to attain a good goal directed perfusion. The objective of this video is to simplify and create a reference tool for all perfusionists that would allow to quickly determine the lowest acceptable blood flow needed to provide an adequate DO2 I requiring only a patient's body surface area and current hemoglobin level. Instead of calculating all this calculation which I mentioned before during bypass, we can do necessary calculations pre bypass itself. To simplify that, we just need a body surface area and current hemoglobin level when we are on bypass. Let us see how we can do that. This is the formula which we are using to calculate the required blood flow rate according to your hemoglobin and the body surface area. See, we should maintain a DO2I of uh, 
minimum 280 ml for adults as well as greater than 350 ml for pediatric which is to maintain aerobic metabolism all through the cardiopulmonary bypass. This is my goal directed perfusion algorithm which I am following or otherwise we can say that this is the secret recipe for my adequacy of perfusion. This shows what I have to maintain and what not to be done uh, while I am on bypass. So this is for your reference you can see and uh, you can learn uh, something new for uh, yourself to perform goal directed perfusion and I constantly update this every now and then when I face a problem or if I find something is also needed for performing the goal directed perfusion. Is GDP alone is enough? No, this is my answer. Along with GDP, blood flow rate, if we maintain this, we can achieve our goal by maintaining optimal venous drainage, optimal arterial blood flow rate, optimal hemoglobin, optimal colloid oncotic pressure, optimal systemic vascular resistance, optimal mean arterial pressure, optimal anesthesia, optimal temperature management, optimal myocardial protection and optimal glycemic control. With all these things coupled with goal directed perfusion blood flow rate, we can surely achieve the adequacy of perfusion which will be definitely benefiting the patients. To summarize and keep it simple, I just put all those points and what we have to do during bypass in this small table the goals and the interventions for your reference. Minimize CPB's acute volume, avoid stress on kidneys, avoid hypovolemia, ensure tissue oxygenation, reduce inflammatory cytokines, avoid splanchnic vasoconstriction, limit the rapidity of reworming. To further make our perfusionist community's life easier, I already integrated this calculation in my perfusion calculator app as you are seeing in this clip. It is so simple for you because you just have to enter your body surface area, your desired DO2 and the PO2 and saturation which you observed in your first ABG and according to the hemoglobin what you are observing over there, you can match the blood flow rate to keep it in aerobic metabolism. Calculating DO2I, VO2I and oxygen extraction ratio and accordingly managing the CPB has been performed for a longer period of time. But in recent years, real-time monitoring, automatic acquisition of data and automatic recording by arithmetic processing have become possible with the hotline machines. Those who are not privileged to those facilities in India can utilize this method to perform goal directed perfusion management using this ready made app which is available for free on mobile devices. When we all follow goal directed perfusion it will lead to the standardization of the extracorporeal circulation and eventually lead to the improvement of outcomes such as reduction of complications and improvement of surgical outcomes. Why I put this much of effort for you all is to we all should follow and improve our standards and if we do so as a byproduct our patients will get benefited more than anything. We can definitely see the difference in the patient outcome when you perfuse by this goal directed uh, perfusion based technique which boasts us our importance in the team. That brings us to the end of my presentation. I hope you found the information and insights I shared to be valuable and relevant to your work. My goal was to provide you with practical and actionable steps 
you can take to adopt to goal directed perfusion moreover i encourage you all to take what you have learned today and put it into the practice i am confident that if you take the time to implement what we discussed today you will see positive results for sure if you have any questions or would like to follow up on anything we covered please don't hesitate to reach out i look forward to hearing about your success stories implementing goal directed perfusion in your respective institutions we'll catch up in another video